Hello everyone, it's Shauna here and I'm coming to you again to do more of Tri Hackney's Junior Penetration Tester Learning Path. Today we're going to be working on the authentication bypass, so let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start my attack box and then I'm going to start my machine. And as they get up and running, we're going to go on to the next task. It's called Username Enumeration. Okay, so in task number two, username enumeration, what we're gonna be doing is kind of simulating out what you might do if you have a website that you're trying to gain access to. And one of the ways you're gonna to try to gain access to it is first by trying to find valid usernames because then maybe you can uh, manipulate the authentication protocols that are used to get in. So that's what we're doing right here. We're just trying to find valid usernames for this website. So the first thing that they want us to do is kind of scope out the website. So so I'm going to right click copy the link address. I'm going to open up the browser in my attack box over here and I'm going to paste it into the clipboard so that it's now on the attack box clipboard. That makes it so that I don't have any, so many typos. I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste and go so that I can go to the website. You can type it out if you want, but I've gotten in the habit of doing this um, just because I um, just because I don't want to do too many typos. So let's go to the login page here and let's try using the, oh, here, sorry. Let's go to the sign up page and it says if you try entering the username admin. So let's just put in admin. I'm just gonna put in any old email address. I'm just gonna try to sign in with this and I'm just gonna go pass, pass. Just put filler info in there and try to do username admin and then sign up and let's see, don't save. And it says an account with this username already exists. So that's not good for websites to do because now that tells us that there is a user named admin. So what this um, username enumeration task is gonna show us is gonna show us how to find other um, possible usernames uh, for this website. So I'm just gonna minimize this for now and I'm gonna open up the terminal window and in the terminal window, let me just make this a little bit bigger and zoom in for you guys. So what we're gonna do is we're going to copy, and notice that I'm not copying this beginning part right there. That corresponds to your root and your IP address right there. I'm just gonna copy the actual command portion of this right here. I'm gonna go right click copy. I'm gonna put it onto my clipboard, clear what was there from before, and I'm gonna paste it there. Now it exists on the clipboard of the attack box. So I can go right up here, right click and go paste. And so it has everything in there for us. And so let's hit enter and see what happens. So we see admin was right there and it's going through. What it's doing is it's taking this word list that you actually have saved on your attack box. If you were actually to go to user share word list, set list, you would find this document here called names.txt. So what it's doing is it's basically going to this web address and it is actually trying to put in and it's trying to make a username and it's going to, um, it's basically doing, it did all of these requests on that website just behind the back. We didn't have to do it ourselves. It did it automatically and it found these three usernames for us. So that is actually the answers to right here. What is the username starting with SI? It's Simon. The one starting with ST, it's Steve, and the one starting with RO, it is Robert. So that is task two. Let's move on to task number three, brute force. Sorry about that, guys. I almost forgot something. There is one thing that you need to do before we move on to task number three. It says right here to save the results from this command into a file called validusernames.txt, which we can use in a later task and then answer the questions below. So if you haven't done their Linux fundamentals um, path on TriHackney, you may not know how to do this, but you could just Google how to make a file in Linux and you could find the, um, the instructions right here, but I'm just gonna clear this and I'm going to do it for you. So you can go cat and the greater than sign and let's make sure that we um, spell this out exactly how they have it here, usernames.txt. And now it has created that file name and so now I'm gonna enter in, and it's important to put them on separate lines Steve, Simon, Steve, and 
Robert. And once you have created the file and you want to get out of it, you're going to push Control D, Control D, and that will execute out of it. There you go. And so now we have um, the command line. I'm just going to push clear to get us all out of that. So you've created that file. It exists on the attack box. Um, just believe me, you can go look for it if you would like, though. So let's go into brute force. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take those. We're going to take what it's going to do right here in this command line. It's going to take that file that has a list of names, and then it's going to take this file that exists on the attack box. That's a common list of passwords. So it has 10 million passwords. It has the top 100. So what it's going to do is this fuff command right here that we are going to copy. I'm going to copy it and I am going to, let me see, let me clear my clipboard so that I can paste it into the clipboard. And now that I'm here, I'm going to right click and paste. And what this is going to do is it's going to compare those names with all the different top 100 passwords. And it's going to see if we come up with any hits and it's going to do it for this web address right there. So let me move this out of the way and let me hit enter and run this right command and let's see what happens. And so right here we see a um, a hit. The username Steve is using the password Thunder. This is why it's so important not to use passwords with common dictionary terms in it. So the answer to this, what is the valid username and password in the format username slash password? And so it's Steve slash Thunder. That's very important to put Steve slash Thunder right there, no uppercase. And so that is task number three. Let's move on to task number four, looking for logic flaws. Okay, so in task number four, they give us a lot of stuff to better understand logic flaws, how to spot them, and um, how to understand how they're working or not working. So I really encourage you to read through all of this, um, go look at the website and do what they say, um, and also do these curl commands right here and right here so that you can um, just understand how the curl command works. But that being said, though, to actually get the answer for task number four, all we have to do is come down here and first is telling us create an account on the Acme support um, customer section um, using a username and then this email address and then rerunning the curl to basically um, what it's going to do is it's going to um, insert that name and then it's going to send it to Robert and um, it's going to send you Robert's. So um, let's go to their website. Let's go to um, customers and then if you already have an account, you can log in here, but we want to make a new account, so we're going to do it here. So I'm just going to use username, my name. Um, they're telling us to use the email address as the username, so Shauna at, you can use whatever name you want there, customer.acmeitsupport.thm, and password, I'm just going to pass both times, and I'm going to sign up. I'm not going to save it. Oh, password must be six characters. So sorry about that. Learn something. Shauna, uh, Shauna at customer.acneitsupport.phm. And I'm just going to go password and password. So let's sign up. Okay, so we're signed up. And we're inside our dashboard right here, and we see that we have zero support tickets. If you click on support tickets, we have zero. But we have successfully made an account. So I'm going to minimize this for a moment, and I'm going to go back to our um, terminal, and I'm going to rerun this curl request, but we're going to modify something in here. So I'm copying it, going to my clipboard. I'm going to clear what was already in there so that I can paste that command in there. Now that it's there, I can go up here and I can paste that command, but you need to go back to where it says username right there, and you need to put in the username that you created. So I'm going to put in Shauna right here. So basically what it's gonna do is that we know that there is this customer, um, that there's one for Robert at Acme IT Support. And what we're gonna do is instead, we're gonna trick this domain that when it gets a reset for the email Robert at Acme IT Support .thm, it's gonna instead send it to this username, the one that we just created. So let's just hit enter 
and it's run it. And now let's go back to the website and I'm gonna refresh. And now I have one support ticket that there is a password reset for Robert. So what it did is we tricked it to send Robert's reset password to our email address instead. And so now we have the support ticket. We received a request to reset your password and it's telling us to visit this website right here to automatically log in. So I'm just gonna right click that and copy. I'm gonna go into a new tab up here and I'm just gonna paste and go. And now we are actually in Robert's account. He has one support ticket. We're gonna to go to that support ticket. It's a new ticket. And I'm gonna just click on it so that we can read it. And it gives us the flag right here. So that's complete. You got the flag for that task. So now let's move on to task number five, cookie tampering. Okay, so in task number five on cookie tampering, they are trying to show you what you could do if once you find cookies and cookie values that are um, coming up in your web um, analysis and enumeration, you can do things with the curl utility to try to manipulate those cookies to gain access. So they show you about running a cookie test um, and that shows you the different cookies and then you can use the curl method to change the login as uh, true but the admin is false so it says that it logs you in as a user and now they want us to run this curl method right here. So we run this curl method right here. I'm just gonna copy it. I'm going to paste it to the clipboard and then I'm gonna go right up here and I'm gonna paste it into my terminal and hit enter and it shows you right here this is the flag for the first question down below. All right, so like I said, I do not show flags. That is going to be uh, blurred out for you, but let's do the rest of these questions. So I'm just gonna minimize the terminal right now. So it tells you about encoding. So it tells you about encoding and it wants you to get the MD hash and you might be thinking, well, how do I get that? And they give you a hint right here. They tell you to go to this website right here. So let me just take that copy. I'm going to open a uh, new window. Let's see. Yep. I'll just open a new tab. Put that in there, crack station right there. Actually, I wanna make it a window so that we can go side by side and make this easier for you guys. Okay, so all that we do on this one is we're just going to take this uh, hash value right here. Just make sure that you copy it all. And we go back to the crack station website and we just paste it in there, say that we're not a robot, and then we crack the hashes, and then it gives us the result right here of the type MD5 hash, and it's 463729, that's the answer that goes right over here. Okay, and so the next one is we're going to do a base64 decoded value, and so you might be thinking, you know, they didn't tell us this. Well, they're trying to get you to think like a hacker. So whenever you see something that you don't know, we should be Googling. If we had Googled on our own, we would come to see this website called base64decode.org. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that website right now, and then I am going to take the value right there that they want us to decode. And I'm just going to paste it in there and I'm gonna decode it and it gives a flag right down there. So you guys can do, again, that's blurred out right there. You can do the flag right there. Okay, now they want us to do encoding and they give us a hint for this one as well. There is a base64encode.org. So we're going to copy and we're going to go to that one. Just gonna open up another tab right here and go to it and let me go back over here and so a little trick here you need to take the brackets with this one so take everything including the brackets to get the correct answer I'm saying that again take everything including the brackets to get the correct answer see brackets brackets and code and it gives you the code down here it starts EY capital J so that big long um, letter and numeral code is what needs to go right in there for the answer. 
So that's it, you guys. That is authentication bypass. I try to get through it as quickly as possible for anybody who might be stuck. Um, if you'd like me to go a little bit slower or if you have any comments, criticisms, or questions, please leave them below and I'd be happy to answer them. Until next time, happy, ha happy hacking, and I hope you get through the junior penetration learning path all the way. Bye-bye now.